Mr. Ajay Kumar Bala, Power Secretary of India. Uh, Mr. Kumar, good morning. Thank you for joining us. Now, first, let's understand the implications of the Allahabad Hil High Court good ruling morning. for the power sector per se, because the reaction which we're getting from the power industry or the power sector is that this is bad news and government needs to come in otherwise the power sector is going to go into a complete downward spiral yeah right um, and of course the industry was praying for a stay on the circular of rbi of february 2018 which has not been granted by the court but uh, court has given uh, two three suggestions in their order uh, the high power committee shall meet and see quickly where RBI representative can be involved and see what uh, best possible can be done and then they have suggested certain section 7 consultations with RBI which Ministry of Finance would be taking a call on and uh, we have already convened the meeting of high power committee and uh, on 31st of August and we have written to RBI governor for sending a representative for that meeting. So let's come I and see for further discussions what comes out of this. Is there a proposal where center may actually be intervening uh, with their authority and they may challenge the RBI's directive? See that is for the Ministry of Finance to take a call. Uh, if it comes up for discussion in high level uh, high power committee then we will uh, I mean, uh, discuss it there in case Ministry of Finance brings it there for discussion. Mr. Bhalla, the court also highlighted the need for the centre to take stand on initiation of consultation process. Uh, uh, do you sense that uh, there could be a further course of Correct. action with respect to dialogue with the RBI perhaps? And do you see any room for some relaxation from the Reserve Bank after consultative uh, processes? Definitely there is a scope for consultation and uh, I am um, sure Ministry of Finance would be taking up the issue with RBI on this matter and uh, looking at the specific, uh, some of the projects are under resolution as we understand from the lenders that they had gone for bidding and all and uh, expecting that there was matter was in court and uh, we may get some relief. Some of the commission projects which are under bidding could not be concluded actually. So I mean uh, this uh, lenders also are placing their views before the government. So let's see, I mean, if, uh, if uh, I mean, Ministry of Finance and RBI uh, are able to start a consultation process and uh, resolve some of the assets where uh, biddings have reached an advanced level. Mr. Bhalla, realistically, because you know that's exactly what Mr. Ramesh, when he spoke with us the day the Allahabad High Court judgment came from uh, REC, was telling us that they had sought a 180 a day extension. What is the kind of timeline that power companies actually need to resolve the issues? Correct. And uh, being in the ministry, what are the solutions that you have on the table? See, we have uh, basically issues like. Uh, uh, lack of coal linkages for certain projects and uh, the level of uh, percentage of coal available is not uh, for the 85 percent PLF it is little less than that. Second issue is the delay in payment from the distribution companies and third is the certain regulatory issues where the change in law uh, uh, pass through takes time and affects the uh, payment uh, sequence. So there, uh, I mean, uh, these are the major issues which were flagged before the uh, committee headed by Secretary Financial Services also. And basically these are the TOR of the uh, high power committee to look at coal linkage as well as PPA issues and the payment from DISCOMS or whether a payment security mechanism can be considered and uh, how best we can ensure that there is a regular system of payments to the power plants which are supplying power. Of course, there is another issue that they had uh, some of the bid projects were bid very aggressively and the fixed cost bid by them is not able to service the debt. Now, there some restructuring is required. That is what exactly the bankers were looking at in this whole bidding process that what is the sustainable debt level which can be serviced by the present uh, PPAs and uh, I mean that process could not be concluded perhaps for any asset. Or maybe, I mean, if yesterday some of the assets could be concluded, I may not be aware. 
Mr. Bala, uh, you would appreciate, sir, that you know um, this issue comes with a fair amount of legacy, and I think that's where uh, the RBI feels the need to put a hard line where the matter is resolved. I think uh, they were already given uh, 14 months uh, of a notice to you know get the bad loans sorted out with the lenders, and that hasn't quite happened. So they put perhaps a hard stop here. Uh, yeah. How much do you think? Uh, would be required for all the entities to come together to actually solve the process. You know, at the end of the day, this is really about resolution on the ground. Uh, if it requires an extension, then perhaps so be it. But there needs to be yeah. some sort of immediate action, and that's what I, I think the uh, central bank is coming from uh, to a legacy sector which has been um, marred by the pressure of bad loans for a while now. Yeah, you're very right. I mean, RBI has uh, given a lot of time, but post-circular, you know, I mean, some of the assets for which the rating was initiated, there's a system, I mean, you know, in, and you will appreciate public sector banks will have to do a proper uh, selection of agencies, do the rating, then offer it for bidding. Then bidding also has lots of issues. People uh, offer certain conditional bids, they offer certain uh, additional um, uh, supplementary bids and all. So these issues are considered and imagine one or two projects where the 27 lenders are there in one go. And largely there will be more than 15, 16 lenders in many projects, but the maximum in one case would be 27. So all these people coming together and reaching a final decision has taken time and rather in most of the cases they have not been able to reach finally any decision. So we expect that if, I mean, um, if a certain window is available, where bids have already gone through and sufficient uh, lenders feel the reasonable bids have come, uh, they should be allowed to conclude those uh, bidding bid, bids. What would be your approach, sir? Because you know now we are talking about perhaps the government aligning itself uh, with the RBI directive or working out uh, some common ground with the RBI to uh, you know find a solution to this problem. Uh, if we allow uh, the cases to go to NCLT, there is a risk of uh, you know lenders taking a significant haircut in resolving these bad loan uh, uh, problems. Uh, or if we give them an extension of another 180 days, it's again a wait and watch on when cash flows come back, when demand picks up, and they're able to at least service some amount of uh, the bad loans which are uh, 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 piling on their balance sheet. How do you look at a fairly productive solution yeah. to this problem in the immediate uh, term, like in the very, very, very near term. I mean, see, only I mean, in both the processes, uh, a fair uh, price should be available to the lenders so that uh, their uh, loss is not uh, very bad. Now, what exactly is happening in the present bidding process? They have reached certain stage, so if it can be concluded, it is very good. Otherwise, the whole NCLT process will start again and the whole fresh round of biddings and all will take place, more time will be taken and uh, then uh, definitely the conclusion would be reached in NCLT. I mean, the apprehension could be the less uh, bids will be of lesser amount, that, that may not be true, it depends on the type of asset. It's a, it would be a fair bidding either outside NCLT or within NCLT. So we don't expect, I mean, that's only question of time and delay will be there, uh, so bankers will have to suffer more. As you rightly said, it's already taking time. So lenders should have concluded some of this within the time frame. As there are a large number of lenders, they have not been able to conclude it. In NCLT, the process, process will start afresh, so it will take little longer time. So in the meanwhile, in any case, some of the sectoral issues, post-NCLT also, an asset if it gets sold and gets picked up at a reasonable price, it still needs to, we need to address some of the sectoral issues. So Hypar committee definitely would be looking at those issues whether the assets go to NCLT today or it, it gets resolved outside NCLT. Some of the linkage issues, some of the payment issues and some of the regulatory issues we need to address in any case. That's my last follow-up question. Uh, right now what we've discussed is that, you know, the equation of lenders versus the borrowers. But the power sector has to be viable enough for fresh investments to kick in. Uh, you know, right now lenders uh, are desperate so smart deals could be cut at uh, very, uh, you know, viable uh, prices. But the problems of the power sector, whether it is the discom issue or the linkage, how, what are you doing to address those basic issues? Because it's the long-term viability, sir, which is in question here. 
See, I, definitely. I mean, that is what I said. The sectoral issues remain, whether the asset goes to gets resolved today or it goes uh, gets resolved in NCLT. And these are the three, four major issues, which is the part of the terms of reference of the High Power Committee. I mean, uh, whatever has happened over, as you said, is a legacy over a period of time on the linkages and change in uh, coal uh, coal block cancellation and subsequent issues. Now, those uh, we will be further discussing at uh, as an interministerial committee and try to see what uh, best solutions can be found to address these issues at the uh, earliest. Uh, <clears throat> Mr. Bala, closing comments and I'll take the liberty of asking you one more question. I mean, it's a rarity for us to have you on ET now. What is your view on the way how power prices have moved? When power prices moved up very sharply three, four months ago, everyone said, oh, it's not going to be permanent. It is only because of the uh, shortage of coal. Uh, but now pr power prices have stayed firm. They've come down from the peaks, but uh, they are nowhere close to the lows. Yeah. No, that's true. I mean, you see, it's a, it, it has many factors which control those power prices in the exchange. As I always have been saying, exchange, the, the transactions are only 3 to 4 percent of the power. That should not be uh, raising an alarm, but it's a very good indication of the uh, shortage of uh, demand in certain scenario. Uh, we need to look at a lot of uh, market factors that why uh, it is such a limited market. So it's a four percent, and if we put our deep portal together, then it becomes about nine percent, which is a short-term market or a day-ahead market. Uh, otherwise, a large percentage of ninety percent of power gets transacted through the long-term or medium-term PPS, where the prices are very stable. So I mean, uh, we should not read too much into it, but it's a reflection of the immediate shortage of coal in certain plants or uh, uh, excess wind avail availability at certain points of time or the excess hydropower available during monsoon time. So that, that makes the uh, uh, exchange prices fluctuate quite a lot. Uh, I mean, uh, it, it definitely gives, gives us a lot of indication, but it does not reflect on the long term or medium term market of the uh, pricing system in our country. All right, Mr. Bhalla, we leave it at that, sir. Thanks very much. You know, this is such a burning issue right now. It's great that you've been absolutely candid Thank about you. it. Thank you. And, you know, uh, being very upfront in uh, addressing uh, the possible solutions that can be taken up to resolve the matter.